comedy to MIT. So, woo! <laughs> So this past semester, um, stand-up comedy has been writing jokes, you know, going to workshops, going to comedy shows in the Boston area, and we're really excited to share with you guys what we've been working on. Woo! Yes, yeah, so we have a super exciting show planned for y'all. Um, we're having stand-up comics from MIT, and a professional headliner, Ismail Lutfi. Yeah, so thank you again, guys, so much for coming out. And, um, you know, stand-up comedy is open to anybody who's interested in learning and writing or performing comedy. So um, if you think you're funny, come check us out. <laughs> I think some of you are. <laughs> so anyway, um, I can't drive, but what do you say we get this show on the road? <laughs> All right, so first up, we have our token gay Jew. Max Siegel. So, I lost my virginity recently. We got any virgins in the crowd? Any fellow virgins? Okay. Some of you are definitely lying. Okay, this is MIT. I've read MIT confessions, okay? So, um, I lost my virginity at 20, I'm 21 now, and uh, as an adult virgin, I really dealt with a lot of commentary from friends, potential lovers, which was always a great time. And um, something I got a lot was a lot of surprise from people. They were like, oh wow, you don't seem like a virgin. And I'm like, thank you? <laughs> like, I don't know if it's the way I walk or what, but... Then I was thinking about it, and I was like, you know, imagine saying that to someone for any other reason. Like, imagine going up to someone in a wheelchair, and you're like, oh wow, you don't seem disabled. <laughs> like, thanks, asshole. <laughs> you know, I was an ugly kid growing up, okay? And like, not ugly in an endearing way, like some kids are. Like, I was just bad to look at, just an eyesore. <laughs> I had those transition glasses in elementary school that would go from regular glasses to sunglasses when you go outside. <laughs> pretty cool, right? Pretty cool technology. No, explicitly not cool. Like, actually, exactly uncool. Um, part of the problem was when I go back inside, they take a while to switch from sunglasses to glasses, and so I just kind of look half blind in class. <laughs> And I actually had a lot of kids in like second grade asking me if I was blind. And I don't know if they were just genuinely confused or just making fun of me, but I had to ditch those eventually. Also in the fifth grade, I had a bunch of teeth pulled. Um, so I had one big tooth for a whole year. And I was walking around all snaggle toothed and shit, wondering why no one wanted me. And it was so bad, my best friend's family at the time actually called me Nanny McPhee. So, suffice to say, we're not friends anymore. <laughs> Luckily though, when I got to high school, you know, puberty started to do its thing. And um, I was actually nominated for Biggest High School Glow Up my senior year. And, um, you know, at first I was, I was really gassed, I was complimented, but... I started to think about it, and it's actually such a backhanded compliment, you know, because it's not like the award is hottest senior. Like, no, that's the MVP. But biggest blow up is just like the most improved player. Like, that's just saying like, oh yeah, you used to be really ugly, and now you're just less ugly. Like, it's not really saying much, you know? But the only thing more backhanded than getting nominated for biggest blow up is getting nominated and losing. <laughs> Which is what happened to me, you know? <laughs> they were like, yeah, you used to be really ugly, and now you're still fucking ugly, so keep trying, because no one wants to fuck you. <laughs> but, you know, eventually the time came, and I started playing the field. And, um, I actually, like, have something a little more serious to talk about, um, that I kind of started to realize when I got out there. Gay sex is gross, okay? Like, I have to put my dick where? This was not in the job description. Like, I did not sign up for this. 
I have never known what gay foreplay is supposed to look like. Like, <laughs> hey babe, you've been taking your fiber pills recently? Like, you've been using those medicated hemorrhoid wipes? Like, doesn't really get me in the mood. You know, that's why I don't understand straight men who want to do anal so badly. Like, we got any straight anal lovers in the crowd? Okay, I told you some of you were liars, you know. I can see it on your faces. Talk about gaydar, I have anal dar. Okay? But you know, us gay men, we do anal because we don't have any other choice. Like, we don't have any other holes. Have you ever tried putting your dick in another man's dick? Okay, my urethra still hurts from the last time I did it. But you know, it actually, it's classic straight men, because straight men always want the best of both worlds. Like, they always want to have their cake and eat it too. Like, I've noticed in these liberal parts, in this, in this Cambridge bubble, a lot of straight men will be calling their girlfriend partner. And it kind of rubs me the wrong way, like, it's kind of weird. Like, I'm like, let's call a spade a spade, you know? Like, now that it's cool to be queer, like, all these straight men want plausible deniability. Like, oh, maybe their partner's a guy, maybe it's a girl. Like, no. If your girlfriend's on birth control, so you can hit it raw, that's not your partner, that's your sperm bank. <laughs> the type of guys who call their girlfriend partner are the same type of guys who say we're pregnant. Like, <laughs> like no, she's pregnant and you're just an asshole. <laughs> But you know, I'm solution oriented, okay? I'm an engineer, after all. So I'm just not here to bitch about my problems and complain about straight men. Like, I, I have a solution, okay? If straight men love anal so much and they want to call their girlfriend their partner, whip out the strap on, okay? Let your girlfriend peg you. That's what I'm talking about. That's an equal partnership, okay? Ever since I started stand up, I've been trying to get into the habit of keeping like a running list of just funny things that pop into my head or little jokes I think of throughout the day. And it's been really helpful for my therapy sessions. <laughs> you know, it's actually great because my therapist only pays attention to me when I make him laugh. And you guys only laugh when I talk about my fucked up problems. So, mutually beneficial. I got one of those uh, Google Homes, one of the many like smart activated voice devices, and it's great. Sets my alarms, gives me reminders, all that. But one thing I've not been able to figure out is how to be sexy while using a Google Home. <laughs> like, picture this, I'll have a guy over, the vibes are right, I'm like, hey, you like music? Yeah? Okay, I got music for you. Hey Google, play a sex playlist! <laughs> Immediately kills the vibe. Like, actually, you can just go home, actually. But, um, you know, a lot of people are trying to be liberal these days. Like, liberalism is very in, which is great. But, I think sometimes it actually goes so far, we just, like, circle back around and it's conservative again. Like, I saw this ad on the train the other day for an LGBT advocacy group that was called Youth on Fire. Maybe let's not burn the gays. I don't know, it seems a little... Missed the mark on that one. Seems like it could be a thinly veiled conversion therapy scheme. Like, we lead your youth through the flames to salvation. Like, maybe not. You know... A lot of my single friends will complain about not having a boyfriend, and they'll be like, I, I, want a, I want a man, I want a boyfriend in my life. And then they're just like, oh yeah, you know, like, if it doesn't work out, I'll just get a dog. So I have something to cuddle with at night, and I have someone to love me unconditionally. And I'm like, that's kind of fucked up to switch your dog for your boyfriend. Like, I don't want a dog in place of my boyfriend, because if my boyfriend was my dog, and my dog was my boyfriend, I'd have to pick up my boyfriend's shit and I'd have, to, I'd have to fuck my dog. <laughs> and I'd never pick up my boyfriend's shit. <laughs> so, I don't, wanna, I don't wanna say that I hate gay men, but sometimes these, these other gay men be testing my patience, okay? Like, the other day I was talking to this guy on Snapchat, which, that was my first mistake, Snapchat. But, you know, we, we've all been there. All heroes fall sometimes. 
And um, you know, it was late at night. We were we were having a little back and forth. And I sent a little scandalous picture, and I was feeling myself. And his response was, "Her, as you should." <laughs> immediately flaccid, like immediately flaccid. I literally heard my dick go wah wah. <laughs> the other day, I was on a date, and you know, it, it went nice. We we got coffee. We walked around the city. And at the end of the day, I went in for a hug. He went in for a fist bump. Like, that is not what I meant when I said fist me. Okay? <laughs> I've always thought that it's really ironic that Christians hate gay people so much. Like, Christians do not like the gays. But it's really ironic to me, because their favorite guy, Jesus Christ, was totally gay, okay? Like, the long hair, the flowy white robe, how about the drama? Like, come on. The sandals, too? What did he have his toes out for if he wasn't gay, okay? <laughs> Jesus was totally a twink. Like, I taught Jesus. <laughs> he loved my holy water. <laughs> but you know, what really sealed the deal for me and made me know from a young age that Jesus was gay was the way he was up there on that cross. Like, Jesus was up on the cross, limp wrist and everything, and he was like, Oh my god, they're slaying me. I'm dying for your sins. Like, thank you guys, that's my set. My next is Ulrich. He doesn't speak English, but he's nice to look at, so, there's some you lose some.